Hello, my name is Ronan Bedia. I am from Niramai Health Analytics Private Limited. Today, I am going to present our work on thermal imaging as an application to the Oncocerca worm in estimating the fecundity. This project is done under the collaboration with the University of UAS, Ghana, University of the Ghana, uh, which is from the Ghana, CWRE from USA, funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I wanted to thank all the contributors from the Niramai and the respective institutions for the contribution to the paper. We'll see about the oncoceriasis and it's a why fecundity is an important parameters and how thermal imaging can be used for the, its estimation. River blindness or oncoceriasis is the second leading cause of the blindness. It affects half a million people. It is spread by a parasite which is called as oncocerca volvus and hence the name oncoceriasis. It is transmitted the, by the fly and this worm stays in a subcutaneous uh, nodules. Um, around the skin region. Their offsprings usually travel through the skin and migrate to the eyes and where they cause a permanent blindness. However, the initial symptoms uh, are, you, are the formation of the inflammation um, at different parts of the body, which is also called as a subcutaneous nodules. As a treatment, ivermectin is given, which, kills, which cannot kill the worm, but it can sterilize the worm and hence avoid the blindness or any other skin diseases. So what are the challenges? Current uh, diagnostic methodologies uh, are like skin snip, which is nothing but the skin biopsy. It can identify the microphilia load on the skin. Uh, however, it is it has low throughput and can be painful for the patient. Second modality is the nodulectomy. Of course, it is definite, but cannot be used for the continuous monitoring. That is, if you wanted to study the effect of the drug on the oncocerca virus, cannot be used for it. Other than that, there are a lot of current requirements for the research and the diagnostic facility, which are low capital expenditure, low skill technician, instant reporting, automatic analysis, portability, non-invasiveness. Um, and, yeah, and both of these modalities, which is skin snip and nodulectomy, are kind of less suitable as of right now. So what is needed is there is a need of non-invasive, automated, instantaneous, and portable diagnostic methodology. Uh, which can help in the research. So one, so we have thought thermal imaging can be used as a non-invasive technology to assess the oncocerca volvulus, and hence we have got the funding from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to conduct the research. This is the first ever study which was done as an application of thermal imaging technique to the disease, which is called as an oncocerciasis for the diagnostic purposes. And what is the motivation? The metabolically active worm, which is the oncocerca volvus, whenever they are metabolically, they are metabolically very highly active during the angiogenesis process, which result in an increased blood flow and the heat changes in the subcutaneous tissue. This heat Changes in the subcutaneous tissue can be captured using thermal imaging camera. Since this is the first ever study, uh, we have proposed a thermal imaging acquisition protocol as a first one of the contribution uh, towards the paper. Apart from them, in order to avoid a skilled technician to understand the thermal images, we have designed an automated algorithm to process the thermal data and extract the features from it. We have also considered the applications of the thermal machine learning techniques to the thermal imaging data. And last but not the least, we have created an end-to-end -end data capture to inference tool. Our main contribution, which is that through this paper, is to show the effectiveness of the thermal imaging in estimating the fecundity, that is nothing but the fertility of the alive oncocerca worm. Since most of the uh, medicines cannot kill the worm, can only sterilize the worm, it is very an important factor to know the fertility of the oncocerca worms. And hence, our thermal imaging tool non invasively can estimate it. Below diagram, you can see as a workflow for the thermal imaging system for generating a diagnostic results. To start with, we'll go with the data acquisition protocol, uh, which we have identified. So there is an hospital room which is set up where the patient comes in and doctor identify what are the different inflammation or the nodule uh, regions and they mark it with the marker. The patient are then made to rest for five minutes in order to uh, get rid of the extraneous heat and a thermal image is captured. Post that an alcohol is applied or uh, alcohol swabs are rubbed at the nodule location. Uh, alcohol is a cooling agent and it provides a localized cooling to the nodule region and instantaneously a thermal video is captured for a duration of two minutes. We basically wanted to capture the thermal rewarming due to the external cooling. This is also called as a dynamic thermal imaging and we intend to extract a lot of features from there. So this thermal data is captured for the study population of 125 participants which are recruited at the Ghana um, having pres showing presence of one or more palpable nodule regions. 
All these participants uh, sent were sent for the neuroleptomy and histopathology analysis was done and which was considered as a ground truth. Now, out of 125 patients, 192 distinct palpable nodule regions were imaged since a single patient can have palpable nodules at multiple locations. And this is a statistic which we obtained, which 91 of them have no alive female bone, 26 are having alive but non fertile, and 75 alive fertile female bones. The second step is nothing but the methodology. So we have obtained a thermal data uh, images and uh, videos. We basically pass it through a data pre-processing step, which involves three steps and followed by the feature extraction. After the features of extraction, we use an ML estimator to, in order to distinguish between a fertile worm and a dead or the infertile worm. The first step in the data pre-processing is nothing but image and the video alignment. Since all the images and the videos which are captured are using a handled E75 camera, there is a motion misalignment between them. Optical alignment between the frame is done using an ECC algorithm, which is called as enhanced correlation coefficient, in order to uh, in order to uh, stabilize them. As you can see from the video here, left side is the unstabilized one, uh, which is the actual video, and the right one is the stabilized video. This sort of an, uh, stabilization help us uh, in order to track the temperature values. This is done for both images and the videos. Second data pre-processing step is the nodule registration. Since we have said in the in the acquisition protocol, we basically mark the nodule region with the marker. So we do a digital uh, registration of this uh, thing. Uh, as you can see here, there is a uh, digital registration mark for the nodule location. The third thing is the ROI segmentation. Since we are not interested in the regions which are outside the alcohol applied region because alcohol, uh, it can contain a cloth or something or the other, so we uh, we wanted to segment uh, where the alcohol is applied. So we use a deep net architecture, which is a VNet, which is trained on it, and we get the region of index which is corresponding to the alcohol applied region. So this is the third uh, uh, data pre-processing. Once we obtain a nodule ROI and the stabilized video frames, we do the feature extractions. So the idea here is that it, uh, out of all the uh, data that we have, we only capture the four frames. The uh, image which is captured, we align it, that is we call as aligned image, and the videos that we have, we uh, pick three frames from it as 0, 60th and 120th second. We calculate the mean and the standard deviation for various uh, region of interest, which is ROI and ROI, and find out the relative difference between them. The idea here is to identify what, how the mean and the standard deviation changes with respect to the time. Also, we wanted to see how much is the thermal rebounding related to the amount of alcohol which is applied. So uh, we extract all these features, almost 56 features are extracted from here. Um, now come to the experiment part. So we formulate the fecundity as a binary classification problem, class zero with the nodule with the dead worm or alive non fertile but class one with the nodule having the alive fertile female worms. Out of 125 subject data, we utilize the 95 subject data for training and validating the random forest model and 30 subject data is used for the uh, prospect to test set. So out of the 56 features, uh, we uh, remove the highly correlated features and use only 35 discriminatory features in order to train the thermal imaging model. This thermal imaging model, uh, which is the random forest model, is then tested on the 30 subject data. This subject, 30 subjects are having 47 nodules, and 19 of those nodules are having alive fetal bones and 28 nodules with infertile or dead bones. So we go get an AUC on the test set uh, of a 0.838, which shows a very good discrimination capability. We find out three operating points. Point A, which is having high sensitivity, which is desirable for the earlier detection. Point B is a balanced sensitivity specificity. And point C is having high specificity, which is desirable for the drug efficacy. From this results, we can see that there is a potential of thermal imaging with the machine learning in detecting the fecundity status of the bone. Also, this tool has various features like non invasive portable, affordable approach, and instantaneous report compared to the other modality. Other potential which we see is that it can be part of a drug effectiveness testing because it can assess the changes uh, in the oncosarcoma with respect to the changes in the drug. Um, this, is, this has potential features. Of course, having said that, last case studies are required to be planned in order to evaluate its effectiveness for the clinical implementation. Apart from that, there is this additional information, which is that we have open source entire data set is available on the GitHub and the papers report. Uh, there is additional paper uh, which talks about the viability estimation, where uh, 
of the worm, whether the worm is alive or the dead, it is published in the EMBC 2022 and available on the PubMed. And uh, there is a data capture tool. Uh, there's a screenshot of that, which basically captures the data. It does the processing. Uh, it extracts the feature. It runs the ML estimation and it generates a diagnostic report. Uh, all this is done end to end. And this is what we have proposed. This, this is what we are trying to do with the thermal imaging. I hope uh, you have enjoyed the presentation and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you and welcome.